I'm currently driving a Honda HRV with multiple warning lights on the dash. It's running a bit rough and it's got a poor idle. In this video, I'm going to show you what caused them issues and how I fixed it. Two thousand and fifteen, two thousand and sixteen Honda HRV. This is a one point eight. The lights are all over the dash. We have the engine management light on. We have the tire pressure monitoring light on, and we also have these warning lights on. That is essentially check system. Bring it to the workshop and get it checked over. So, uh, doing a scan. P zero one seven one is the fault. Fuel system too lean. As always on this channel, I try to keep my videos as short and sweet as possible. I try to give you as much information packed into a short time frame. I know it's valuable, your time, and I try to honor that in these videos. So what I'm going to do is bypass some of the um, normal steps that you do when you have these lean fall codes show up. I'm checking misfire um, data on the scan tool. I'm checking to see if it's localized to any, any cylinders, and I'm also checking the fuel trims short term and long term and monitoring those uh, you can get a good indication as what's going on when you are familiar with both of those but regardless of that how the fault actually presented you have all of these warning lights on in the dash including an electronic parking brake system fault as well in this case so you have that check engine light on and all the other lights that you can see here you can ignore the tire pressure warning light that's on that is obviously a separate fault there is a, a noticeable um, rough idle, so there's a, a regular beat in the idle and sometimes a little bit of a dip in the performance when you're actually accelerating as well. So both of them was uh, very noticeable. The fuel economy had uh, gone out the window, so it was um, bad fuel economy uh, with this vehicle as well. So when you have the likes of those fall codes, when you have the likes of these problems, I always recommend never skipping the basics, which is checking around your engine bay, listening for noises. Can you hear anything going on or can you visibly see any problems that was the case in this one after i'd done quick checks on the live data i was actually with the engine off i was able to see first of all a collapsed hose that hose goes from the inlet manifold to the pcv valve and that hose had collapsed upon closer inspection as you can see here there is a pinhole in the actual uh, hose itself so i know i have pinpointed a problem so once i had seen that pinhole and once i had seen the collapsed pipe it was very clear that we needed this pipe so i went ahead and ordered that while i was waiting for that part to come in i did do a few other checks and one of them was just spraying some um, carry cleaner onto the actual pipe itself and listening for any audible change this is something that is done uh, to detect leaks and see if you can um, source any problems there but i just do without interest it actually increased the split in the pipe a little bit but you can hear an audible change so that pipe that runs to the PCV valve, what does the PCV valve do and how does it um, bear such an effect on how the vehicle is running? Well, it uses the engine vacuum to pull blow-by gases out of the crankcase into the intake manifold through the combustion so it can re-burn. Now, if you're ever looking at fuel trims and if you are uh, in a position where you have a scan tool that has access to it, um, ways that vacuum leaks can be identified through the fuel trims is when you are um, checking those fuel trims at idle and you see positive fuel trim and you start uh, to um, accelerate, you start to increase the revs and the uh, fuel trim start to return to normal when revving, that is a clear indication or a very good indication that you have a vacuum leak. That's something I, I learned a long time ago and it's a method I apply anytime I am looking for these type of problems. So the removal of the pipe is as simple as the install. It's just two clamps on this. It's one on the PCV side and one on the intake manifold side. Two spring clamps that you remove, take the pipe off, and then you install the new one. Now, uh, if you aren't in a position or you're waiting,
waiting on a hose to come in for a long period of time you could do a temporary fix in the likes of these ones um, it's not too hard to root a new pipe or put in a joiner piece into it to be able to get you by until you get a new hose in any case it was um, not long in between when uh, we ordered the part to when we got it so as soon as it arrived the customer came in and we refitted the pipe for him after the pipe is installed it's clear the fault codes and then you're just confirming that all the issues has gone away uh, brought it for a road test monitored the live data and afterwards it was bring it back to the workshop call the customer give him the good news and tell him that the vehicle is all fixed and ready to go home I'm just on the final road test now with this Honda and the fault codes are cleared. They have not returned. I have monitored the live data and everything is looking to be just fine. That leak has been resolved. Therefore, there's going to be no more lean codes on this vehicle and I'm happily able to give it back to the customer. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.